Good morning, Javier Becerra. Uh, privileged to be the Attorney General for the great state of California. Today, Monday, the 11th of September. Uh, obviously, want to start the, the day by expressing our gratitude to all first responders in this country and express uh, our sympathies to people who have become victims of calamities or man-made tragedies. Um, we all remember 9-11, so I think it's important that we start by remembering those first responders and those families from 9-11. At the same time, we've got the situation in Florida, in Georgia, with Hurricane Irma. We still have the folks in Texas and Louisiana who are trying to recover from Hurricane Harvey. And so it's uh, important, I think, to start off by remembering how lucky we are to be Americans and lucky to work together as one American family. And in that regard, I think we're here today because I'm standing by two members of our American family who are very important as well. And another place where we have a lot of work to do to really show that we are family and we're going to prote protect each other. I'm pleased to be join joined by Rosa Barrientos, who is a DACA recipient, a dreamer, and by Eva Jimenez, who is also a DACA recipient and dreamer, both of whom were brought to this country when they were four years of age. And they'll tell their story. And their stories tell you more than anything why I'm standing here to make this announcement today that uh, joined by Attorney General Lori Swanson of Minnesota, Attorney General Brian Frosch of Maryland, and Attorney General Janet Mills of Maine, uh, the great state of California will be filing a lawsuit today against the Trump administration for its unconstitutional and Ill illegal termination of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. I think it's important to focus on Eva and Rosa because uh, they're here because they were brought here when they were four. They didn't make the decision to come. And for quite some time, they, like their families, had to live in the shadows. But in this country, I've never seen a case where we tell children that we're going to punish them for acts that they were not responsible for, especially when you have young people like this who've proven that even though they had to live in the shadows, now that they were given a chance to come out through the DACA program and show what they could do, well, when you hear their stories, wow. Wow you can see what it means to have an opportunity to come out of the shadows. Neither Rosa or Eva violated any of our laws when they were brought to this country. They are innocent and therefore should not be punished for things that were done by others. In this country, they've done everything we would consider to be right. They're doing things the right way. And I think it's incumbent upon all of us, especially those of us who consider ourselves leaders in this country and for this great state, to do the right thing as well. And that's why we've decided to file this lawsuit. Because in California, you don't become the sixth largest economy in the world just because. It just so happens that one of every four of the DACA recipients in this country, some 200,000, live and work and call California their home. And they've been helping California become the sixth largest economy in the world. The cost of trying to terminate DACA would not be just a cost felt by Rosa and Eva. It would be felt by California businesses, California local governments, who depended on the economic success of the DACA program. It would not only be a, a travesty economically for our state, it would be a travesty for local law enforcement who've grown accustomed to having the support and cooperation of the families of people like Eva and Rosa working to combat crime in the neighborhoods. In California, we don't turn our backs on those who help build the state, who work hard. It's unfortunate that President Donald Trump chose to turn his back on Eva and Rosa and the 800,000 plus dreamers who came forward, paid a fee, went through background checks, now pay taxes, have gone through college or are in college, 
have started businesses, have purchased homes, are employing Americans. He turned his back. Donald Trump turned his back on all of these folks. And he turned his back on the American public because by any sheer number you want to calculate this, the vast majority of Americans say people like Eva and Rosa should have a chance to stay out of the shadows. Nearly three quarters, if not more, of Americans believe the DACA program should continue forward for dreamers like Eva and Rosa. That's why we're ready to sue here in the state of California. When the Trump administration rescinded DACA, they didn't just threaten the futures of hundreds of thousands of young Americans like Eva and Rosa. The Trump administration also broke the law. In our complaint, we argue that the reckless choice to rescind DACA violated the Constitution as well as federal laws that help ensure our government treats everyone fairly and transparently. Let me tell you what we actually allege in our lawsuit. One, the federal government violated the Fifth Amendment due process protections by putting at risk DACA recipients' personal information. The federal government violated federal statutes by changing rules without going through comment and notice provisions and requirements. The federal government violated federal statutes in making arbitrary and capricious decisions for no good reason. The federal government violated federal statutes by failing to assess harms that their decisions would cause to businesses in America. The federal government violated a principle of law called equitable estoppel, which simply says, if you reach out to the American people and you tell them that they can rely on your representations to do something that would otherwise be in their detriment, then you just can't pull back. We don't bait and switch in this country. We don't tell people one thing and then the next put them in harm's way by having them come forward and do what's right. The federal government violated equal protection of the DACA recipients. I bring this action in order to have a court immediately address the president's unlawful and mean-spirited actions. And in closing, I want to send an important message to dreamers whose DACA authorization expires on or before March 5th, 2018. Even though we are fighting the Trump administration's DACA termination in court, you who are DACA recipients also need to protect yourselves as best you can. If your DACA expires on or before March 5th of next year, you have a critical decision to make and challenge to meet. The federal government's most recent memorandum rescinding DACA explains that if you want to maintain your DACA status for a final two years under the Trump administration's new rules, you must apply to renew by October the 5th 2017. October the 5th, 2017. If your DACA authorization expires on or before March 5th, 2018, you must apply by October 5th, 2017. We have great legal organizations here in California that are ready to assist you. If you need legal advice on whether to renew your authorization or not, Get it from a lawyer or an accredited representative, not a notary public, not a notario, as we know uh, they're called in Spanish. Get someone whom you know has the authority to provide you that legal advice. And finally, all the dreamers should know that in California, we don't just support and value you. We fight for you. Let me now ask... Rosa Barrientos, to please come forward and share her story. Rosa. Hi, everyone. My name is Rosa Barrientos. Um, I was brought to the United States at the age of four. And growing up, I never really knew I was undocumented until I went to middle school where I was really involved in a college um, in a college program that was uh, preparing us to go to college. And I was so involved that the director uh, told me that I had won a scholarship. 
and they called my house and my mom answered and they asked her for my social security and my mom told them that I didn't have a social security. And back then I thought that I did have a social security and I thought that my mom didn't want me to go to college. And I remember feeling really upset at her and not understanding that I was undocumented. And so I, I knew I was undocumented at that moment, but I didn't know what it really meant or or the obstacles that I would face until I was in high school. My junior year, there was another program that if I applied and I got accepted, they would take us um, to the East Coast and visit all these amazing colleges that, that, you know, in my mind, it was my wildest dream to attend these colleges. And that was 2010 when the Federal Dream Act um, was in the house, I believe. And I remember going to the director because on the application, one of the questions asked, are you AB 540? And in my head, I was like, this is either a good thing or a bad thing. And after after the meeting concluded, I went up to the director and I asked him, I'm AB 540, can I still apply to this program? And I still remember this tall man looking straight at me in the eyes and telling me, unless the DREAM Act passes next week, there's no room for you in my program. And that was the first time where I understood what it meant to be undocumented. And I understood that this was what my life was going to be like as an undocumented student. But I didn't let that stop me because I still tried really hard the last two years of, of high school and I was able to to win these all these scholarships to attend college. And on June 15, 2012 was the day I graduated high school and that same day I had mixed emotions because I knew I was going to go to college somewhere but I didn't know what was going to become of my life because I was undocumented because I knew that I might not be able to work in the field that I want to, might not be able to have that career that I dreamed but I remember getting a phone call from my mom right after we finished practicing our ceremony and she said President Obama just signed something for undocumented students and I was getting calls from my family telling me about this program and I learned more about this program and and on that day and that morning it was a mixed feelings of I don't know what's going to happen to me but that night when I walked the stage I walked with the genuinely smile on my face knowing that there was a new future waiting for me and that everything was going to be all right for a little while and I applied for DACA and one of the first things I did that that I couldn't do well while I didn't have DACA was travel and I traveled to DC and I the world just opened up to me and I felt that I was given wings and through DACA like I was able to intern in Washington DC something that I never thought I would able to, would be able to do because I was undocumented and I've been able to work and it's been so important because I wouldn't have been able I wouldn't have been able to be where I am right now without DACA because of the opportunities I've had because I've been able to work to pay for school I've been able to give my parents small gifts that I wouldn't have been able to and and I I feel all over again like I did that morning of June 15 where I don't know what's gonna happen to me I'm I'm a senior at Sacramento State, majoring in ethnic studies and government, and there's six months, and I'm about to graduate in December, and I don't know what's going to become of my life. I don't know if I'll be able to, to go to that career path that I want to with the majors I have. But regardless of, of that fear that I feel, standing here next to Attorney General Javier Becerra and standing in solidarity with so many organizations, I feel have a lot of faith that something great is going to happen and Congress is, is going to act. And I just have a lot of faith that knowing that there's a lot of people standing behind me that are going to fight for me and are going to let are going to give me those wings that I had with DACA. Thank you. Rosa does much better than I do. She had no notes. I had I needed notes. Uh, Eva Jimenez. Hi, uh, my name is Eva Jimenez, and I'm a student at the University of California, Davis, major, double majoring in international relations and political science public service. I immigrated into this country when I was four years old, 
and I've been living here a little over 17 years. I lived in the Central Valley, which it proved to be a little bit difficult because everywhere I turned, there weren't enough resources for me growing up in middle school and in high school. Um, I always knew I wanted to go to college, so I strived to do my best. I excelled in my classes. I was sometimes the only minority in my AP classes, which proved to be a little bit difficult because I felt that I was the only one who thought differently from everyone else. So generally, I just tried to stay quiet and not express how I was feeling internally. But I think that when the doctor program was implemented in 2012, that helped me gain a little bit more um, strength that um, opened up some doors that had previously been closed. It gave me hope that it would lead to a more permanent um, solution, not only for me, but to other undocumented people. I was able to work in high school as a tutor, helping in after school programs. And um, going into college, I was able to work as well, which has helped me in my college expenses. I work for, as a tutor for the, for the Davis Unified School District, and I've also been able to volunteer and work with um, immigrant lawyers who help people in my situation. I help in the AB540 and Document Student Center in UC Davis, where I have been able to meet other people who are in the same situa situation that I am in. It's been really helpful. AB540 um, DACA has been um, helpful to students like me to provide us with opportunities. When Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced that DACA had been rescinded, it was really terrifying. I felt vulnerable and um, I felt that the cloud that had once stood above me reappeared. And it was really terrifying. But I think that an opportunity should be provided not only for documented people or those who were able to benefit from DACA, but also the other 10.2 million documented immigrants that weren't as lucky because I believe we all deserve to be in this country. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope, um, and I say this uh, sincerely to those reporters, even the cameramen and women, um, Put yourself in the position of Rosa and Eva right now. Um, they don't know if doing this publicly is putting them in further peril or not. Um, everything you value could be on the line. I don't think any of us ever has to worry about that. Maybe if you were in Houston when Harvey hit, maybe some of the folks in Florida when they were told Germa's going to come, you, you put your, that, then you don't know what's going to happen. Then all of a sudden you start thinking, it's like some of those reports where you were hearing people say, it's like walking around after a, a nuclear explosion, not knowing what to do. Now live your life every day just like that. I, th that's what this is about. And, and why we're visiting punishment on them, Rosa and Eva, the other DACA recipients, because adults haven't gotten it right to fix a broken immigration system makes no sense. And this is where I hope that you all, the eyes and ears for the American public, do us some justice because I can sue, but someone has to tell the story. And um, I think that's why I probably could have said four words and not used prepared notes and you would, I would have done better just by saying Eva Jimenez and Rosa Barrientos and had them speak. <laughs>